for somebody who's, I would say, acutely empathic and it's out of control and you have, a, you have some steps to take, but like the first thing you have to do is have some breath and space inside of your being. And it seems like a lot of the empaths that are imbalanced have clinical anxiety, like yes. in my physical body, I cannot even, you know what I mean? Yes. So what is the first thing somebody can do just to get that breath and that space to get to a place where they can even take the first step and start recognizing what is mine, what is yours kind of a thing? So for me, you know, I mean, this is such a, I would say that I think first steps are where, what is really wrong? I mean, it's sort of, I think it's very individualized, but what I guess I would say is one of the first steps is looking at what are the places in your own life? What are the things that you may be doing in your own life where you are actually shooting yourself in the foot? Are you drinking like are you are you self-soothing by you know having is like is it wine o'clock every day are you are you like you know are you carrying a sippy cup with wine I mean there I know so many moms especially where wine has become kind of like this like reward but where alcohol but especially you know like just like that evening you know like that evening alcohol that evening wine is sort of like the self-soothing, the self-coping. And I'm saying this not at all from a place of judgment as much as I'm saying there are certain things we can do that bring us temporary relief, but the problem is that it brings us, it does not bring us long-term relief. So I guess I would ask like, are there substances? Like, look, where might you be shooting yourself in the foot? Are you consuming substances that are affecting your ability to like, it might bring you temporary relief, but then as you start to, as it starts sort of moving through the processing, all of a sudden you feel worse instead of better. You start feeling more anxious. You start feeling more uncomfortable. Could be cigarettes. It could be sugar. It could be shopping. It could be alcohol. It could be drugs. It could be um, sex. It could be binge watching Netflix. It could be any number of things. But I think looking at that and going, where might I be shooting myself in the foot? As well as where am I telling myself that I am responsible and that I have to do something that I am stuck here? When the truth is, even if it feels like a hard road to hoe, I am choosing to show up. Like there's a really, so I would say one shift that we can start making is even to basically say, I choose to stay here with this antenna, you know, with this very challenging situation, like maybe um, caretaking for an aging, you know, aging family member who's very sick. We have a choice. It's just that the consequences of that choice may not be like we we choose the thing that's hard because we do not want the other you know the other thing is harder um and i think sometimes that we sort of feel like we're trapped because because it feels like the alternative is work would but but we still like we are if we can if we can embrace the idea that even if something is really hard we are choosing to do the hard thing as opposed to we are stuck, we are, you know, we have to do the hard thing. We don't have to do the hard thing. Any one of us could say, you know what, this is for the birds, I'm done. And just pick up and say, you're on your own. There are consequences to that. And we might not be able to live with it. But there, but we all get to choose where we show up, what we show up for, whether we continue to show up. So I think starting to shift the perspective so that we recognize, yes, this is hard and I'm still choosing this is a lot more empowering than I'm stuck here. And then another step for me, and this is sort of generally the first step is when I recognize that I am feeling a sense of distress, what I will do is I will just put my hands on my heart and I will simply ask the question, is this mine? And nine times out of 10, the answer is yes. And that some of it is mine and some of it is not mine. And then what I like to do from that, once I understand what is mine and what is not mine 
is that I look at the places that are my work to do, and I will often use EFT to address and clear it, or sometimes I might use something like emotion code or just some prayer or breath work, but I will sort of set the intention that my part can be healed and addressed and shifted. And I then also say, I send that which does not belong back to where it belongs. I send that which does not serve me back to where it belongs. And just breathing into my core and then breathing out all the stuff that is not serving me. So these are some of the things that we can start to do. But what I want to say is that we did not get this way overnight. And so a lot of times it's a process of learning how to gradually reboot and reset our nervous system, because the problem with anxiety disorders and with very highly sensitive, anxious empaths is that our nervous systems are often so dysregulated, we don't even necessarily know what it feels like to be relaxed and calm. And in the work that I've done with a lot of highly sensitive empathic people who have struggled with anxiety, what I have found is that it's not you go from a, ten, a 10 of anxiety down to a zero. It's that you go from a 10 of anxiety, maybe down to a seven of anxiety. So it's a little bit more manageable. And then from that seven, maybe down to a five, where it starts to feel like you can take a little bit of a breath, like sips of oxygen. And then from that five, maybe down to like a three, where all of a sudden it's like, you start feeling like there's more spaciousness and there's more possibility. And maybe you start seeing like, oh, I could enlist the help of my brother-in-law to fix this situation, or I could actually say no to that person instead of just continuing to engage with this. So we start to create more space for ourselves. And eventually we start to bring ourselves and our nervous system down to what would be you know, a regulated state as opposed to the dysregulated state that so often we are in. And so... Um, you know, one of the most simple ways to restore ourselves or bring us back into sort of a, our body, because a lot of times when we're in that sort of fight, flight, freeze, flop, fawn stage, is that we are, um, that we're not really in our bodies at that point. So one of the very first things that we can do is actually, it's a very, very simple thing to get ourselves back online and back in our body, but it involves just a sip of water or a beverage. And so what I, you know, what we can do is just, you know, take the beverage and instead of just sort of gulping it unconsciously, really pay attention to what we're drinking. And so what I'm going to do, I've got a bottle in front of me for anybody who's listening, you've got something in front of you too. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do right now, and if you guys are listeners are here, if you are have something to drink, what I want you to do is just as you sip, or as you take some into your mouth, feel it in your mouth. And then follow the sensation of the liquid as far as you possibly can into your body. And just notice what it's like to really feel that beverage in your mouth, your throat, and even possibly going down into your stomach. So when you're ready, just take a sip. Wow, so much is available that you don't really ever notice. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What I find amazing is that every time I do this, I'm always struck by how much more I feel when I'm tuning into that beverage than I usually am feeling when I'm sipping water. And I can still feel it going into my body right now. I can still taste it in my mouth, but I can feel the liquid like entering into, like I can feel it at my solar plexus now. And there is a way that that really allows us to enter back into our body and just gives us that like, oh, this is where I am. It's kind of like this little exercise is almost like if you were in the, you know, at a shopping mall or 
any or a, an amusement park or possibly an airport or any place that has like one of those really big diagrams that has the maps that say you are here the water or the whatever beverage it is that we're drinking allows us to restore or to come back to you are here you are here and it helps us to reorient where are we what are we experiencing what what and just like i am here in this body right now.